Yeah, because basically I'm looking for either of the Udacts. Okay. Um, Nanise is in the dormitory. Her brother is who knows where. Um, but she's okay. alone, and she doesn't invite you in. She looks very upset with you, actually. Um, and so I'm just, like, I can, I can just tell, right? She just... No... She, well, when you op- first open the door, how she actually greets you, she just looks, she sees who it is, and she just says, what? I say, uh... You seemed interested in the Herhetsu uh, Guild, and I had some information about them that I thought you might be interested in knowing. So I don't want anything to do with you. Since I didn't want to believe that your tail was a conduit of evil, but now I've seen it. I've seen how it controls your mind, and I'm glad to be rid of mine. Um, I don't understand. Why Why do you say that? So because what you killed your actions? friend. Just... If you had any good in you I... at all, you wouldn't have done it. I she's, didn't kill him. She's shouting this and is drawing some attention from the other students in the dormitory. I'm just hit his side. I didn't kill him. She says, you did. You had the chance to bring him back and you didn't take it. That's as good as killing him. It's the same thing. If there were any good in you, you would have taken it. You, you, saw, you saw the ritual happen. He didn't, it didn't work because he didn't want it to. She says, I don't believe She's you. She's vocally attacking you now. Do you cast a rebuke? <laughs> she says, your tail is making you lie. Something's pulling of strings and I'm glad that my brother and I will never have to deal with it. Where is your brother? She says, why? Are you going to try to corrupt him? The way you tried to corrupt me? Oh, hold on. Mikdol is... Sorry, guys. I gotta... He has his new character almost done, so... Yeah, she asks, are you going to corrupt him the same way that you tried to corrupt me? I I just got to corrupt you. I've done nothing but help you. I've I've taken you out to to the tournament. I've put in a good word with you for... with with the dean... And she says, honeyed words, exactly like Amshun said. Can you at least tell me where Amshun is? She's absolutely not. I'll, I just, I'll just roll my eyes at fine, I'll find it myself. And she closes the door. Alright, so I'm, I'm gonna ask around and see if anyone knows where Amshun is, what class he has, he has now. He is in a, uh, an abjuration class. I believe that was his school, was abjuration. Okay. But he will be... Uh, oh, oh. Uh, there's a, um, the best time to get him, if you wanted to get away from his sister, you get the sense it would be one, in one of the common areas of the school, in one of the courtyards or, uh, the common room that in between the eight towers would be a spot. There, there's places where you could pull him aside. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for him uh, at, the, at the closest common area that's just outside of the abjuration temple, tower. Okay. McDowell! Orphan is such an adventurer. <laughs> like, What's up? Let's see. What is a good... Because I don't have any more Smash like, Brothers she, pieces. She cares about what she cares about, man. Yeah. Um, no, I was just going to say, like, that dude died like a day ago. Are you still on that? I don't have <laughs> Ike saved in my box, though, so... You don't have Ike saved? It's a okay. butt. Why don't you, you just to... use Kirby for now, and you can find a, a, a worthy because, one later? Because that was Adric. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. There's what Adric. kind of character is this new guy? He's a fighter. Kirby still makes sense. Yeah, but he doesn't punch things. He In fact, swords it's things. fighter Kirby. So we're just going to but... go with this pawn for now, because McDole is my pawn, and he must do what I say. Yeah, right, okay. So, is this this character you've rolled up, is he Keyskin? Yes. That's the idea? Okay. Mm-hmm. I would probably be back on the boat after doing my jobs last night. Whoa, what is McLean still doing here? <laughs> yeah, I thought he was oh, leaving I, like an hour ago. No, I, I was I was just listening. I wanted to make sure. I'm, I'm going to leave okay. shortly. Well, the good news is that McDole liked those uh, martial abilities so much that he decided to build a character around them. So he's going with a fighter yeah. this time. So that'll be good. Okay. <laughs> the martial abilities that decapitated him. <laughs> <laughs> the section. He saw it happen and was like, I need that. Also, he doesn't have a five in any score this time, so that's good. Yeah, he's, no. I'm... He is a fighter. He's a fighting game character. He's like, oh shit, I got beat bad by that character. I need to play as them. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I counterpicked. Uh, what's his face? <laughs> so, are you a member of a Keyskin Guild then? Are you a member of the Wallwalkers or the Slavers Guild? 
Uh, the Wall Walkers. You're, so you're actually a member of the Wall Walkers. Okay. So yeah. let me pull up my notes page, Harl. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that McDowell would have his character rolled up shortly so I could hear it before I left. No, it's going to be, it'll be, it should be fun. Um, so the Nall of the Wall Walkers is Nall Zaher, and his outlook on criminals, etc., are very, very close to yours, just reading your ideals and stuff on the sheet here. That's good. And he is very disenchanted with the current Zhal because he doesn't feel like he's giving enough, he's given enough latitude dealing with, uh, like petty criminals, cut purses, things of that nature, he has all the time in the world, but like white collar crimes in the city, any member of the nobility, uh, any member who's a high up in a guild, these people are untouchable, and Nal Zaher would like to bring the hammer down on them as well. Um, and he feels so he's the, pretty Garrus, right? He's pretty, yeah, a little bit, a little bit Garrus. Um, <laughs> if you're anybody who knows Planescape, also a little bit Mercy Killer. Um, How Garrus is he though? So, yeah, just reading over your character sheet, you and Zaher are very similar in outlook. So, you've been given some measure of rank uh, okay. in, in his guild. So, you have responsibilities to walk the wall. Like, which, uh, you know, let's go ahead and say that you patrol the Slaver's Ward. Um, you okay. alternate days along the walls and along the streets. And you become on the tail of uh, an escaped slave, which is a grave crime. Any slave who attempts to escape... Uh, Within the walls of Kiska, they are considered criminals, and it's false to your guild to locate them. This particular slave, you've tracked him to Low Harbor, and you think he has snuck aboard to Snowway on a ship. And you've come down to the ship, and you look up at it, and adorning the ship's scale is the dumbest thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> This is really fucking stupid. Who it did is this? A huge gelatinous. Whose idea was this? I will punch him in the face. <laughs> this huge gelatinous dinner plate with eye stalks and tentacles coming off the bottom, and the ship is called the Friendly Flump. Flump. And this is the ship that you have tracked this runaway slave to. McLean, do you want? Do you got one more scene than you? Or are you going? Or do I need to write you in here? Or um, I got one more scene than me. Okay. I, I, I'll push it to a little past nine. Okay. Um, you're the only party member aboard the ship right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, Good for me. I mean, you have, the NPCs are aboard the ship. Uh, Fila is there. Um, Swent is there. Arvin is there. Ryler is there. Balin is not. Balin is out buying things. And one of the uh, crewmen comes and find, finds you. Says, Beg your pardon, sir, but there's a soldier who is here at the ship, and he hasn't said anything and hasn't approached, but he's given us the stink eye. Okay. You go out on deck, uh, look down on the docks, and I'm going to take a two-minute break while McDole describes his new character, Khalil, to us. Okay. Khalil yeah. is built like a brick shithouse. Like, he is fucking huge. <laughs> like, friggin' six feet tall, friggin' um... He's, he looks, like, ethnically, he looks pretty similar to, like, most of the other humans in this area, but, so, he, he's, he's pretty nondescript in that, really, like, but, I mean, he would, he would blend into a crowd if he wasn't, you know, built like a brick shithouse, as I said before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and nice link there, Nodal, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's dressed, um, he's, he's dressed in armor. He's got a uh, he's got a long sword and he has a longbow slung over his shoulder. Um, he looks like he means business, and just 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 by glaring at you, you know he's not gonna freaking take it, take no for an answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, what? I'm assuming you're a human because it would be it would be weird if you weren't. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. So I'm looking at the so, ar the uh, archetypes and things you took, the maneuvers you took. Okay, Repost is really friggin' strong. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's what you you see looking down. You see this uh, the soldier Kalir, Khalil standing there. Kalir, Kalir's a different person entirely. Kalir, Kalir is Kalir in this game. Shout, <laughs> shout, shout out to Kalir. <laughs> Kalir, Kalir's the man. So is but, he, so he's he's very clearly looking at the ship. He's making no. And does does he does he look at me as soon as I come out on on board? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, he's looking right at you. Are you in charge? 
Ahoy! Can I help you, soldier? I have reason to believe that there is a uh, an escaped convict on board the ship. Uh, that'd be news to me. Do Do you need to look for the? Yes. <laughs> Um, well, uh... The captain okay. just popped off to another plane of existence at the moment. Yeah, the captain, the captain As is Terran is wont to do. Um, is he, uh... Does, do I have any knowledge of an escaped convict on the ship? You do not, no. Okay. I mean, you haven't been doing frequent searches, either. I mean... The ship is very undercrewed. Are you refusing me? The captain comes and goes at a whim. Like, people could get aboard this ship without your knowledge very easily. If you refuse me, if you can, if you, if you choose to refuse me, I can go get a, uh, a writ of warrant to search your ship. Oh, you already have one. <laughs> okay, well then. <laughs> I will I will bust that shit out then. Here's the, here, I went ahead and got us, uh, got us the ship back out, so. Cool. Where You're gonna he? participate with the cops, man? Are you a cop friend? <laughs> well... <laughs> I, I mean, I got. I'll be I, right back. There's somebody at the door. I'm sorry. Trust in your fist, Zook. You're, the police will never help you. <laughs> Where is Zook at? Oh, there he is. Here. So you're you on keep the deck making right now. me small so I can't see myself. I. You're not in down below the ship. You're up on the deck, nerd. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I had the exact opposite. <laughs> sorry, the soldier appears to have popped off for a minute. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to give uh, him Ike or someone for next session. I'll just shoot things at McLean until this is over. Good luck. <laughs> Thank God for semi-lock. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of semi-lock. This is this is pretty good stuff. Stuff shoots really well off that pawn, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised nobody's made a tabletop simulator pool table yet. But now that you said it, it probably will. We exist. need to make a tabletop simulator mini golf game. There is one, but it's bad. <laughs> I've, I've looked at it; it's terrible. Orphan, you do yep. manage to find uh, Amshun in one of the common areas over the course of the I, day. Um, I, I wave to him as I approach. Uh, how close do you get before you wave? Like, how close to before you make your presence known? Um, I, I wave to him from a fair distance off. I don't want to startle him. When he sees you from a fair distance off, he picks up his pace in the opposite direction. Uh, I groan and I, I jog after him. I, wait! I need to talk to you. Uh, and you oh, sorry for... Sorry, I'm, I'm ready now to start shaking this place down. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in just a second, Orphan. I okay. want to okay. make sure that the Zook scene gets done before he turns into a pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So! Oh, okay. Um, I... I, I, I guess come aboard. I mean, we're not we're we're on friendly, pretty friendly terms with the the people here, so I guess come aboard. All right, I will just I will start looking. Any, and I, I will start up here where the is it is this, is this room locked? First of all, make a perception check. Perception DC thirteen, and I see you have it trained. That's probably good for your line of work. Yeah, dude's an investigator. Yep. Let's see here. Um, no, this is this is a cool character concept. This might ruffle some feathers in this game. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna like this guy. <laughs> uh, where did my character sheet go? Have you added him to the? Uh, Your perception is yet? plus three. I haven't. I haven't done anything yet. Yeah, there it is. I actually get. I actually get a better when it's passive. <laughs> uh, that is nineteen. Nineteen. Coming aboard this ship. Immediately, like immediately, you get the sense that this is a pirate ship. Yeah. Like you know, so, almost right away when you step on it, this ship. There's almost nobody here, which implies that all of the crew are ashore right now. There's very little show of organization. The captain's not even around. <laughs> so that's the first impression you get just walking onto the deck. And I mean, the ship itself is colored black and red. They've painted the friendly flump in like pillowy pink paint on the side, but the actual bulk of the ship is still black and red. So. Yeah, but this is this, not here, then, uh, Your immediate impression... That just means that I'm not... You know, listen, that just means that, you know, there's fewer people to get in my way. Yeah, this, this is a pirate ship, and they've got something to hide. Yeah. Do we? That's what Khalil feels like. Alright. 
Alright, so first thing I see is this place right here. Is the door locked? The door is not locked. That door doesn't lock. <laughs> Open that shit up and, and start looking around. You know what Gendron's quarters looks like. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> was... <laughs> Sharon wasn't keeping all the party loot in this room, just the alchemy stuff. Mm -hmm. So you come across this keg of exotic pepper, a spice that you've never seen before. And by the way, if they're <laughs> importing this, there's no paperwork for it. Uh, you come across... All of the ice potions have been given out to PCs, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Then yeah, you come across mostly alchemy equipment. Okay. As well as the ship's log is in this room. Zook, what are you doing while he's rooting through the necromancer's quarters? Um, I'm standing back far enough so that I'm not, like, crowding him, but I'm also kind of keeping an eye on what he's doing. Hey, as you're standing there, Arvin comes up behind you. And he just looks down at you, and he whispers, what's this then? I think that there's some escaped guy here or something, I don't know. That's, that's a city official on our ship. Uh, yeah. No, he had papers and everything. This is bloody well not good. We're the worst fucking pirates. <laughs> <laughs> We're the worst pirates ever. I'm bringing back two guild leaders. I've already told them it's a pirate ship. <laughs> Orphan, is there any, any chance at all you want to abandon your current mission and go back to the ship? <laughs> You know, let's let's just say that that uh, I'm Shun just like locks him. He gets to, he gets to his dorm first and locks himself away, and I don't really have a choice, so I gotta go back. Okay, there you go, perfect. Orphans. Nice. Okay. You get back to the ship, back to the flump, and there are two people standing at the end of the gangplank. It looks like they're waiting for someone. And one of them is a gruff-looking, weary, bags under his eyes, uh, pale-skinned man, so you know he's not from Kiska. Mm -hmm. And the other is a beautiful, young sand elf. And the two of them are standing there, very pointedly not talking to each other. But they're standing at the entrance to the gangplank of your ship. <clears throat> and they see you approach, and they turn, and... Immediately, I mean, first thing you do is regard your tail. And you don't see, like, the look of immediate, like, surprise or revulsion on their faces that you've seen throughout the rest of Kiska. Okay. And the man addresses you as you approach. He says, are you, uh, aboard this ship? I say, I, I am. I got a summons from some creature of Prince Humbers to meet me, to meet him here. No. The woman looks at him and says, Now that's quite a rude way to put it. We were invited aboard your vessel by uh, the the half-elf, Eldov, who is in the service of Prince Humberth, as I understand it. Do you want me to see if he's aboard? I can fetch him for you if he is. And the gruff man just kind of gives a harumph, but the sand elf says that that would be most acceptable. All right. I'll I'll go down to the to the quarters. Where, well, does El, El does, don't don't get ahead of yourself in the here. Alchemist, right. Basically, in the alchemist quarters, I'm just looking in any place where a person might hide, mm -hmm. and then if if they if if I, if it's not immediately forthcoming, I would come out and move on to the next area of the ship. Well, as soon so as much time is it, bad, Brett? You'll you'll get there in just a minute. I want to see if Orphan does anything silly first. <laughs> Um, so he's walking. So the, the so yeah, I will walk across the the deck of the ship toward the uh, um, back here. I guess this is where. Uh, An orphan, you have done the most just traveling out amongst the common folk in Kiska. So you have seen the uniform of the wall walkers before. Um, so the character that McDowell just described to us, you see him crossing the ship, and in the middle of the ship are Zook and Arvin just watching him, and Arvin's watching him very suspiciously. And that's what you see as you come up on the de on the uh, deck. All right, so let's see. So I'll 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 call, let's, I'll call it him. Uh, hello. No response. <laughs> and open the door. This one is locked. Wait. I I I, I look around. Do is, they where, keep these Arvin? doors locked? I'm not sure. You know what? I'm gonna say they're not. 
All right. Look in here. Look around for. Look around for. You places find where Ryler. Might hide. Ryler is in one of these rooms. The uh, navigator. And he looks at you and he's shocked. But yeah, he just ignored you, Orphan, and walked into the ship. I'll, I'll follow him. Okay. Eldove, you arrive back at the docks to see that the people that you've invited over to the ship are already there. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm just going to walk back up onto the ship then and greet them. Well, I mean, they're at the edge of the gangplank. They haven't gone onto the oh, ship. Oh, in that case, I, I'm going to say... Uh... I'm going to welcome them, and I'm going to say, I'm surprised you're already here. That's... When I see Orphan in my way, oh, I'm, I'm going to look, I'm also Sorry, look in this room before I... Uh... Sorry, that's Zook. Oh, yeah, Zook. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I followed the guy, the, like, the him into here. So I'm right there. <laughs> Until you get in my way, I don't even regard your presence. Okay. So, Eldov, you bring your guests up onto the ship, and as you do, you see this congregation of people... In the doorway, <laughs> down at the uh, edge end of the ship. Is this the bow or the stern? I never know. I can't keep stern, it straight. Uh, the yeah. This is the stern. Oh, the, the, the front yeah. is the bow. Okay. So yeah, these people yeah. at the doorway in the stern of the ship, where you know the captain's quarters is, which was Humbert's quarters, which uh, Terran is reclaiming. Uh, the first mate's quarters, which Fila is currently inhabiting, and the navigator's quarters, where Ryler is. So Khalil, you find two people in these rooms in the. Room number seven, you find Ryler the Navigator, and room number six, you find the beautiful, dark-skinned Fila. Look at both of them. They're not who I'm looking for, so... They are not. I'll just take a quick cursor glance through the through the rooms, and then move on. Okay. And then see the, see the short one in front of me, and be like, out of my way. <laughs> so, Eldo, this is what you see when you bring your exalted guests up onto the ship. Like, clearly something's going down. I don't see what this has to do with me. I head down to my <laughs> to my room with the trident in it. Um, and where is that? Where is that at? You were down in room fourteen here. I was down in room fourteen. Yeah. Okay, so you take them down below deck. Agnar immediately, like, all right. I took some time out of my busy schedule. What do you want? All right, I'm going to uh, to tell him the story that I I, I told the other shipment the. Divers Guild Guild leader, and uh, I'm going to explain that I'm here to present evidence of our recent fight against the Sahagan. Agnard nods a little bit. He says that it would be good to hear about the death of any Sahagan out in the oceans. I can't say I'm sorry to hear that Humberth had a brush with them. <laughs> I'm going to uh, to, to say. Uh... I, I'm going to pretty much ignore the, the the fact that he's he's being a dick about Humberth, and just say that uh, <laughs> we, we feel that uh, we might come into contact with the Swagin in the future, and as such, uh, his expertise would be greatly uh, useful to us. And in addition, we have already proven ourselves to be no friends of the Swagin, and if they do co end up attacking again. Uh, we would be the most useful in defeating them. And I'm going to kind of play up my role in having killed for the Swagin, like... Roll... Broken the curse of the the Sea Witch. Roll performance. Alright. You have a plus seven on performance. You better fucking pass this roll. 21. He seems visibly impressed, but he's trying very hard to not show it. Like, he does not want to admit to himself that this creature of... Humberts has done anything well. So while you're going with the story, where, where's your next stop, Khalil? Wait, I, I, I'm going to talk to him while he's still here. I say, can, can I help you? What, what are you? Hello. <laughs> I'll look to the little one who uh, who first let me on board. Who is this? A uh, fellow member of the crew. Now, all right, let's the two of you. Nobody gets on board or come leaves until I uh, until I say otherwise. I uh, nod to him, understood, and I'll go to the gangplank. What is Khalil's feeling about this tiefling? Because having been born and raised in Kiska, it is superstition that tieflings are supposed to have their tails removed at birth because it acts as a conduit. At the longer it gets, it is their connection to hell, essentially. Then I then that that then I he's then. 
and she is probably very lucky I didn't just spit on her as I walked by. <laughs> okay. Ow. Yeah. Damn, son. Yeah. Hard ass. Where, right, where, so where's, where's homeboy going now? Where is he going? Now I'm going below decks. Okay. Watch, I'm here watching the gangplank. As and, I'm, and I'm and I'm following him because I'm keeping an eye on him. I'm, I I. When you come downstairs, take any motion. You all hear the noise of conversation coming from room fourteen. You hear, uh, Eldov telling the story about the victory over the Sahagin and the Sea Witch. Um, Doesn't appear to uh, concern me right now, but that you know, there, there's other people to be questioned here, so I will do that. I will do that here in a moment. Uh, first, I'll take take a look in here in the uh, in the in the surgery, and, and again look around for any uh, look around for any um, and you do places not, for people to hide. You do not find anybody, but Arvin very much does not like this stranger poking around in his surgery, and he mutters something about how Captain Bren would never have allowed this. I'm kinda, sorry. If, I'm sorry you feel that way, but the law will be upheld. Duke kind of gives uh, Arvin a "it'll be all right, just relax" kind of look. Go across the kitchen. Look around in here. Nope, nobody hiding that you can find. Duke asks us again, seriously, what are you looking? Who are you looking for? An escaped convict. It. It. it I mean, what? Does this person look like? I mean, do you want help? Like, we're not. I don't know that anyone's hiding here. Eldov, from five feet away, you hear the conversation happening out in the hallway, and the two guild masters who you're trying to talk turn their attention back to the hallway. And Agnar pokes his head outside and sees the wall walker, comes back inside and looks at you. It's trouble with the law. Not that I know of. What's this about an escaped <laughs> convict, then? First I've heard of it. I will look uh, inside. I, I, that, since I see that door pop open, that'll be the first place I look. You can't actually get into this room, because two people are standing in front of the door. And ah. both of them are wearing a crest on their clothing somewhere. Uh, Agnar probably on... Um, probably on his hat actually, on this turban mm -hmm. or something. Uh, and the young woman is wearing these, like, flowing white robes, and it's emblazoned with a particular uh, sigil that you know signifies they are the head of a Kiskin guild. These are people of some renown. I, I will wonder, uh, I, will look at the, I will look at these two for a moment and be like, why are they dealing with pirates? Do you say that out loud? No, no, I'm just, I, I, he's thinking that, is that he's, you know, he's he's put it. He's putting. You know, that, that's kind of how his brain works. Is he's he put. He, you know, he puts things together. Okay. And as you poke your yeah. head in, and the guildmasters see the look of recognition on your eyes, and Agnar says, "If there's anything I can do to help the Walkers of the Wall, just say the word." And then he looks back at Eldov. I will. Uh, I will just. Please pardon me, my lord. I will. I'll, I'm just looking for. Uh, as I said, an escaped I'm, convict. I'll not trouble you very long. Yeah, they get out of your way so you can enter the room. But I mean, you look under yeah. all the beds, but there's nobody else in here. Just yeah. Eldo right, standing in the middle of the room, just fuming and impatient. Like, let me get to the good part of my story. <laughs> Go across to the. Uh, I, this is the treasury, so I'm pre pretty sure it would be locked, right? Locked. What's in here? As to the as to the to Zook. Chip Treasury. You have the key. I do not. Then find it. Move I'll on to the look. Next door. <laughs> the key's in another dimension with the captain. <laughs> Where is the trident right now? Uh, it's in my footlocker. It's it's the only thing in my footlocker actually. Okay. Fifteen is so a. It's in uh, room fourteen. Fifteen is a barracks, but rows of weapons and things, some armor, but nothing of no people. Okay. Once I've looked around in there, then, all right, we'll start going this way. Have you found the key yet? <laughs> uh, no luck. Get on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, as is I there a mess? I'll be looking under tables and stuff. Is there any wonder? That McDole rolled up a character that has nothing but contempt for all of the players who decided to let him die. <laughs> Fuck all you guys. 
So, Agnar seems bemused by the situation. Like, you kind of get the sense that he really wants you to be busted for something. Like, this ship to be seized or whatever. It would just be the cherry on top of his awesome guilt Sunday. <laughs> um... What was the woman's name? I already forgot. Fight with me? I barely know these people. <laughs> She's way was her name. She's way. Um, she uh, doesn't seem to care much about what's going on. Like, she's here for a specific thing, and if this pirate ship gets seized or whatever, it whatever really doesn't affect her at all. So, uh, what when I get to the part of my story where I defeat the. Uh, the priest through ducking behind uh, ice cover after defeating two ice dragons, I open up the footlocker to take out the trident. And you take out this trident, and she's way immediately you see emotion on her face. And she goes to grab it out of your arms, but catches herself and kind of. Uh, goes back to a position of reserve, like, you, this flash of emotion, she tried to grab it from you, but she realized, oh wait, this would be very untoward, and I'm supposed to be, uh, be, be regal and official right now. But she asks, where, where did you come by this? And uh, I tell her that it, it came from the priestess of the, she was a priestess, right? Of as far the, as you know. Of this wagon. As far as you know, yeah. She yeah. says, to think that they have desecrated such a holy item, that you've recovered this thing would be a great boon to my people. At this, my my eyes light up, and I'd be like, and, and I say, uh, I actually have some more information about this item. When the, uh, the priestess used it, she said a certain word, and I was able to recall it. I would, of course, be, be willing to give it back to the people it belongs to, if you know them. She shakes her head sadly and says, I'm not a priestess myself, but that trident was taken off one of our priests. Um, these things are used in religious rituals, and they are fierce weapons. And I don't have the magic word that activates it. I am a bureaucrat, she says while she rolls her eyes. <laughs> but this thing you're holding, like I explained a couple weeks ago, like this is definitely an item of beauty. It's the only thing... In that dungeon you found, all items of beauty in there were desecrated or destroyed in some way, except for this particular item. In that case, if you were, uh, if you know where I could find these people, I'm sure the prince would be very willing to, uh, to, to grant it back to them as a, a show of respect. And she kind of regards that with, uh, confusion a little bit because the people who have lost it live way under the ocean and there's no way you and Prince Humbert would be able to go and return it. Well then I just give it to her. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so you, you give it to her? Yeah. And she takes it and she has a lot of reverence for this object. Like she, she can't believe what she's holding for a moment. She says I will see that this is returned to where it needs to go. And I, I, I apologize if uh, the Divers Guild of Kiska has given any offense to the, the treatment of the corpse of your beast. I, I say, <laughs> to worry, worry nothing above it. That beast gave us nothing but offense, so... And she says, for my to part... To be honest, I'm happy to see it be of use. So I'm not sure how that we could repay you for this kindness, but for my part, we will see that the Divers Guild supports the Jal. In the upcoming vote. Thank you. That and your friendship is more than enough. <laughs> Agnar watches this exchange. And you two exchange pleasantries. And then he looks at you and says, Alright, what's in that box for me? <laughs> if you can see right here, it's a quite lovely box. <laughs> <laughs> it's a footlocker, dude. It's not lovely at all. <laughs> But it's made of wood. It's very nice wood. <laughs> so. You walk through the mess. You look under the tables. The next room in is the barracks. Lots of beds, but you haven't... No sailors aboard the ship right now. The ship is empty except for these people. Figured as much. And through here, no, is, a, here? Through here is a chapel. 
You don't recognize the, the, the visage of the god here at all. Uh, looks to be some Eaters. ocean god. Definitely not one of the Keyskin Pantheon, but the room is otherwise empty. Evens. <laughs> but I'll look I'll look in here and then get out of there and keep going below. Uh friggin' it, it, this, what is this? this little person why this little person following me. Hold on, why, why is are, this? Why do we have floating what? dice? That's a trick we learned. <laughs> oh my god. Because gravity push. is meaningless with a sorcerer of my power. <laughs> There's a bunch over here too. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Here? What is going on? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. By Engines. the way, that four means I have four level one spells left. Okay. Oh yeah. Cool. I uh, don't. <laughs> I don't approve of this at all. Like. Anyway, you go down below deck. Yep. I'm further down. And then this uh, this this place will probably need a little more uh, work on exploring. This is a big uh, storage room. So Khalil, you can make a perception or investigation, whichever you like. Okay. Zook, you come down. You get to make a perception. Okay. And anybody else who comes down can also make a perception. I don't know where Orphan still is right now. Oh, I'm still guarding the gangplank. Nobody's leaving this ship until um, the wall walker has, has finished his business. Okay. Uh, perception is 18. Y'all are some lawful bitches. That's all I got to say. Hold, all right. Hold on a second. Uh, what is my perception? Got plus five. So I got um, I have 11. Does that pass? Or That's fine. Yeah, me? it was 10. Okay. Um, immediately after entering this room. You hear the sound of one crate banging against another crate over in this corner. It's McDowell's actual new character. <laughs> <laughs> it's Adric is back there. He, he survived miraculously. It's, Adric. Adric. it's, War it's Warwin X. <laughs> oh my god! With all the scales stripped off. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a pink dragon. <laughs> I'll draw so, my yeah. sword. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no need for violence. Are you hindering me? Not hindering you, but just relax. Let's find out what's Step going back. on. Okay. <laughs> like he will he will he will speak curtly and cut you off like halfway through your sentences. <laughs> Alright. I want my sword in that direction. Okay. I'm out. Here's some more movement, but nothing else. Nobody emerges. And it's kind of a dark corner of the ship with lots of boxes, so you can't see back here. You'd have to move some of these boxes out of the way to get back in the corner. I will uh, I will start kicking them out of the way. Still keeping my sword pointed in the direction I heard the sound. Oi, don't kick our crap around. Be gentle. And within a second, you get back there and you see the young... 12 year old slave boy with the uh, a very fresh brand on his shoulder skulking back in the shadow and he sees you in this look of fear on his face and he immediately puts his head as he begs mercy my lord mercy the hell I'm is this now I'm afraid not come here and very shakily the boy I, I, gets I, I, to his feet I will shout over my shoulder. Do you have a? Uh, do you have irons now? You do have Snap, irons snap. aboard. Do we have irons? You do. The brig is right behind you. Um. Yes, I go get these irons because I'm not gonna fight this guy right now. Okay. Yeah, you find a pair of irons. All right. I bring him irons. I give them to him with a stink eye. I will. Take the boy into custody and march him back up to the top, back up to the deck. What is the boy's crime, sir? Oh, you don't have, you don't have that yet. You see the branding on him. You know he's an escaped slave. Uh, march him, march him back out. Ironically, Adric would be the one who would fight this battle. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I don't Zoop. think any of us give a shit. <laughs> Duke mostly just wants to make sure he's not going to like take, try to seize their treasure hoard or anything. So well, let's 
let's get up to the top of the deck and see what uh, Orphan has to say about this. Eldov, All right. what do you have in that box for Agnar? <laughs> I have some lovely trade concessions. Uh, we, we're going to be <laughs> rebuilding uh, with so our, the, the prince's fleet, and in addition, if we have any future encounters with Sohagen, we would of course go to his guild first. Why would my guild want anything to do with the Sohagen? Your guild would like to repair the damage caused by Sohagen. He moles that over. He says, I know you. Where do I know you from? You're in Humberth's service, yes, but it's somewhere else. You're from Dunfoss, aren't you? Indeed. What's your family name? I don't do we, fucking know. Do we not know? I have no idea. Well, Agnar oh, does, and he, he says it to you. Yeah, you're the yeah. deposed house of Mario Brothers, whatever. That is the best name. Uh, Super Mario, thank you. So why do you continue to do Humbert's bidding after all he's done to your family? <laughs> Humbert hasn't done anything in particular to my family. And uh, in addition, he's been uh, nothing but grateful in helping me restore my house's fortunes. Has he? What's he done then? What's he given you? Um, I, I tell him that he, uh, he aided me in, uh, restoring some, some trade contacts in another nation, and in addition, he gave me a position of respect aboard his crew in this, in this voyage. Position of respect? Like what? I, I'm, I'm going to tell him I'm sorry, but I, I'm sure that any of the uh, the members of your guild if you were to give them a position would you would not want them telling that to anyone who asked he nods he says true enough so I'll be honest right now I've got more work than I can take I don't need to replace your prince's ships and even if I did I'm not inclined to take the contracts because I'm more I'm more worried about house Nibiri of a mind to abstain from this vote entirely. Well, House Namir, he has, uh, has nothing but uh, the benefit from hindering your trade, and on the other hand, the prince has offered to increase it. That seems like an easy choice to me. Ah, Nabir, he seeks to stifle my trade specifically because business is booming. Then that would put one over on them if the, you were able to make it boom even more. So I don't think you understand. Here's what it comes down to. If I go to this meeting, and I vote for the Jal, and then House Nibiri wins anyway, which they're going to do, then they know I'm their yeah. enemy. They know that I've tried to prevent them from coming to power. So now they have the motivation and the means to undercut my guild and take my trade. So you're asking me to slit my own throat for the love of a prince that's done nothing for me. I, I'm asking you to to aid in the, the uh, defeat of a guild who you already is your enemy and who you already feel is going to restrict your trade. Because I'll tell you what. I'm a practical man. I know which side of the bread my butter needs to go on. If I get the inkling, and I mean the inkling, that the Jal will win this vote, he'll have my support. But the way things look now, you've got your work cut out for you. He looks over at the mermaid. Well, good day, love. He leaves. And she is still speechless, so she's still clutching this trident. So, well, at any rate, you have our support. I'm going to ask her if she knows uh, any other guilds who might be amenable to aiding in in the vote. And again, she shakes her head kind of sadly and says, I don't pay much attention to these kinds of things. Uh, if I had to venture a guess, if you had 
infinite resources, you might be able to go to one of the noble houses that controls to many of the guilds in town. Sway five or six votes at once. She says, if I had any ability to help you in these endeavors, I absolutely would. I, I'm going to, to thank her for her help, which has already been enough, and uh, escort her off the ship. Okay. Roll me a wisdom check. All right. Let me take one of these non-floating die. <laughs> so, Khalil. <laughs> yeah? You escort this boy off the ship. Does Zook and Orphan attempt to stop that at all? Um, I go not up to all. the top deck and I, st- and, I, and, I, and I make sure that Orphan sees what's happening. I'm not really particularly interested in stopping it, but I, I wonder what Orphan thinks about it. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it. I see it, and, and I, will, just, I, say, I will say to Orphan, "I found who I'm looking for. You so, don't need to guard anymore." Very well then. <laughs> I, I, I step aside. <laughs> Our lawful good got spine is gone. <laughs> I was never lawful good. No. No, I meant at any point. He meant he meant Adric. That, that was Adric. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a hole in the group Adric. now. Adrian would have punched the shit out of this guy. I know! <laughs> and, like, Zook, like, he, I mean, I think he understands that slaving's part of the culture here, so he's kind of like, okay. Yeah, that, and that's that's Orphan's whole deal. She spent, like, hours and hours talking to that slave, so she knows all about, you know, the slave life, and as far as she's concerned, that's just another way of life. Well, more importantly, to be clear, and, and, and more importantly, this, this slave, in attempting to escape, was going against his nature. Well, and Zook doesn't want to get on the bad side of the wall walkers. <laughs> so, eh. Sorry, kid. And after but another I moment. I will be keeping an eye on this ship, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I will mention that. I will be keeping an eye on this ship. There you go. Zook, okay. I'm going to ask you one more time. You, you said you didn't put this patch on at any point, right? Oh, no. It's not, ex- it's not exposed to the outside. What did you do with it, just out of curiosity? I have it concealed in a way that I can readily flash it if I need to show my membership, but it is in no way, shape, or form visible to the outside. It's like on the inside portion of a, of a cloak. Okay. And a couple minutes later, Eldov comes up with his two guests, sees them off, and you see this woman, this Sand Elf woman, is holding the trident that you all took out of the Sea Hag's cave. Uh, I say to Elda, hey, you, uh, sure you want to give that thing away? I'm going to say, uh, I found out who its rightful owners are, and I'm just returning it. Those rightful owners aren't going to, you know, point it at us anytime soon, are they? Because that thing hurts. <laughs> uh, not, not unless they, uh, not unless we were to turn into Sahagin at any time soon. Eldo. Is that a Sahagin weapon? You thought it was, but now the sand elf has carried it off your ship. Okay. What did you get on that wisdom roll? I got a 21. You list, You heard uh, She's Way's words, and she doesn't know a lot about politics. She tries to stay out of it, but she does know that houses control more votes than individual guilds. And one of the house, a very wealthy house, House I, uh, they deal in wines. That's where their fortune comes from. They control... Many guilds. They control the Cupbearers Guild. Uh, they control the Hand Carters Guild, which are the little rickshaw guys that run people back and forth around town. They control the Slaves' Rights Committee. And the Hospital... No, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Hand Carters Guild. And then, they, of course, their own house has it. So that's four votes. And they're currently supporting Nibiri, but... From what you heard in the meeting there with Humbert, that particular connection is not very strong. What Nibiri has a, an alliance with Sand Elves because of various trade contacts. So any guild controlled by Sand Elves in the town will tend to support Nibiri. House I covets that particular alliance and figures that, oh, well, if we vote for Nibiri and support them, now we have this same alliance. So that would be, if you were, a way to find a chink in that armor, that would be a way to sway four votes very easily. 
Okay. Um. Are we onto a new um, time block or whatever? Well, right now we're all on the deck of the ship. So right. once Eldov tells me what his uh, intentions are, we're going to go back over to Khalil for a moment. Okay. Did did the um, did the divers guild person already leave? Yeah. Or did I think of that before that or what? Well, that that would immediately sprung to mind after she so because she said that she doesn't have a lot to do with politics, but if she had the resources and she was in your shoes, she would go after trying to sway some of the wealthy houses that were supporting Nibiri. That wasn't All right. when you left. In that case, I, I'm just going to ask her a question at that time. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask her if uh, if there's any reason in particular she decided to show herself as a sand elf. She says it's easier to walk as a sand elf. <laughs> oh, that's that explains that. All right. <laughs> she enjoys those wiggly things. What are they called? Oh, yeah, legs. <laughs> You're a criminal. <laughs> and she says, and I'm sure you don't know, st stranger, better elf than human, right? <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> he takes a free action to bro fist her. Yeah. <laughs> bro fists are free actions. <laughs> All right, let me, uh... This... All right, this seems like a pretty good time for Zook to duck out unless you had something for him. No, in the, uh, I expect you to leave an evening. hour ago. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So. I'm bad. Um, I already I already um, updated myself up a level, actually, while I was thinking I was going to leave a half hour ago, so okay. everything should be up to date on me. I noticed that there's a Sand Elf Sorcerer on this list. There is. Um, I think I'm going to go pay them a visit. Because, All right, well, because... good night, guys. It was fun. I'll catch good you night. later. I... Night, dude. Yeah. Because you killed ass on that wisdom check, the other major divide between Astenu and Nibiri is Astenu is a very traditionalist house, and they have a reputation for kind of lo having lost touch with the common people. So a lot of the guilds that support Nibiri are guilds that do a lot of dealing with commoners. There's like a, a baker's guild, a hospitality guild, the guild of free men. Um, there's the, the Fisherman's Guild, all these guilds that deal day-to-day -day with Kiskin citizens, um, the Guild of the Bazaar, as well. These guilds kind of feel put out by how Sustenu. Okay. So, a, just a general change in, uh, like, the public opinion, like, oh yeah, no, how Sustenu, we're, we're the hip young house, like, we, we're, we're Obama, like, if you could facilitate <laughs> that kind of transition, that would be another way to attack it. Oh, so All yes, right. we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> so the problem is that I don't give a shit about commoners. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to stick with the, the Sandal Sorcerer. Okay. Who is that on the list here? That which, is which Nal Kerk. He is a Lamplighter. The Lamplighter's Guild. Yeah. The Lamplighter's Guild, their job is every night they go out because there's very little burnable material. There's very little in the ways of uh, wood or wick or anything like that um their job is the lamplighter actually when a sorcerer is found within kisk or even the surrounding lands they're invited to the guild and their job is basically to light lamps on the streets main streets in the high ward and the craftsman's ward especially and that's literally all they do most of them are level one sorcerers they hone their abilities just enough to provide this public service some of them go on to do greater things but that's the guild's function that seems good to me let me, uh... A guild that literally is just sorcerers that go light things on fire. I mean... Yeah, I thought that. Dear dear right up your heart. alley. But yeah, he's currently, uh, that, that's one of the elves. He's, he's supporting Nibiri because he perceives Nibiri to have this alliance with the Kingdom of Elves further inland. Okay. Orphan. Uh, so I am since since like I I've kind of written off the Udax like it doesn't seems clear to me that they want nothing to do with me anymore. Well, it's not their fault. So that, it's mostly yeah. your fault. No, oh no, I'm not saying it's anyone's <laughs> fault. It just is what it is. Listen, it's nobody's it's fault, it's fault, but it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am going to go to the uh, to the Guild of Song. Okay. Because I want a thing. What do you want? I want to get. I want to uh, have them build me a sham because I have 
I have a proficiency for that, but I don't actually have one in my inventory. So I okay. would like a new shawm. All right, let's do Khalil first. Okay. So Khalil, you are uh, Khalil. Keep I'm gonna keep saying Khalil. Just call him Khalil. Jesus just, Christ. Just, just call him Khalil. Let's just oh, accept the God. fact that he is Khalil now. No. Yeah. You return this slaver or this slave to the authorities at the slaver's ward, and they take it from there. And you go to mm-hmm. report back to the Nall. And he's furious when you arrive. Not at you, just in general. Uh, Nal Zahur. And you walk in. Zahur? Yeah, his name is Zahur. Zahur, okay. And he looks at you as you come in. He says, Khalil, I trust it went well. It did. Job well done. Thank you, sir. Was there anything else? No, sir, but I don't trust that ship that I found the boy on. What ship is this? The Fighting Flump. I like. I'll say that. I'll say that with a. I'll say that with a roll of the eyes and just like 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 you're having to fight like like I'm fighting to not say it. But now, did you get fancy? Did you get fancy flump? Did you get the ship's name wrong on purpose or? Yeah. Yeah. uh, Or or uh, yeah, it's like Fighting Flump or some nonsense like that. What gives you that impression? They're pirates. The the the, the 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 ship has been repainted several times. There's places that were locked, and luckily I found him in a place that wasn't locked. He says, "Well, we're powerless to do anything about it." So his words come down. We're not to touch the ships in the harbor. Is that bastard Marthod went back on his word. Did he? And you don't have a great sense for politics, but Null Marthod no. is the head of the current head of House Nibiri. And yeah. he made all these promises to the Wall Walkers, like, hey, you know, if I get into power, you're gonna have all this latitude to go after whoever you want. But as it got closer and closer to crunch time, it became clearer that Nibiri's real loyalties were to his uh, merchant and trade contacts, which means the Wall Walkers would have no more authority out on the harbor, especially over the wealthy merchants that Zahur was looking to kind of rein in than he was before. And Zahur is now furious about it. Well, I did overhear one of the uh, one of the pirates a nobleman from the look of it though but one of the pirates is talking about brokering a deal bro- brokering deals to support Nibiri wait was it Nibiri? Noble? What no you... we're, we're going for Estenu Estenu yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah not Nibiri Estenu he said that's the problem the Jal is no better Jal knows where the gold in his pockets come from there's no justice to be had in this city. Not like when I was a boy. So it's a pirate ship, you say? Yes. That, that, of that, there is no doubt. A lot of black and red. Some heathen god in their chapel. But this... You, the, the fighting flump? I, that might be wrong, I'm not sure. So this is the ship that that prince came in on, that Prince Humberth, isn't it? Yes, that's it. That's it. <laughs> he sits down at his desk, at the chair, the table that's covered in uh, odds and ends that help him do his job. And like he's considering something for a minute. 